All right. Uh, thank you for tuning into Showverse. Uh, today I am uh, with uh, Josh Martin, voice actor of Majin Buu for Dragon Ball is the most popular. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm uh, great, and uh, thank you again so much for uh, taking the time, and it was great to see you on Saturday at the, the con. Absolutely. Yeah, great to see you in person. Yes. Um, so my biggest question to you is, what got you started into voice acting? Well, uh, you know, the short answer is acting. I was, I was an actor, uh, an aspiring actor to get paid <laughs> to do any kind of acting, to be honest. Uh, back and at the time around 2000, 2001, when I booked Majin Buu, there was really no such thing as just a voice actor. You know what I mean? Uh, and they really didn't consider it voice acting. You, you were just acting uh, or you did a voiceover. You would do a voiceover, but there was no real voice acting. So this that term has has evolved and grown and it's really cool to to see that but yeah the short answer is uh, i just wanted to be an actor i got you like ever since i was little that was my biggest dream was to become in the film industry primarily acting or a screenwriter <laughs> right right so then i guess to expound on that a little bit is at, along the way trying to get a job acting me and uh, some friends a couple of them you might know of uh chris rager uh also known as Mr. Satan uh, in Dragon Ball Z, and uh, Mike McFarland. He, uh, of course, Master Roshi, amongst many other things, director extraordinaire as well. And uh, we, were in, we were in a comedy troupe. We started the comedy troupe to make some noise and uh, to try to get some recognition and get uh, agents and other people to recognize us. And uh, sure enough, we were we were stubborn and we didn't go anywhere and uh, we we developed a little bit of an entertaining show there and a good run for a while and um, here here we come to the direct path of Dragon Ball Z which was Mike McFarlane who was already a anime uh, at the time Japanimation fan and uh, he found out that Dragon Ball Z brand new uh, no one really heard of it before was dubbing was recording right, I mean, just right up the road from where we were performing. Wow. And, uh, and, and based on that, he found out that uh, they were having auditions, right? So he went and auditioned and he got Master Roshi and he came back and told us about it. And Chris Rager was uh, very humble when he said, oh, well, they'll give Mike a part, they'll give me a part, uh, <laughs> right? So, uh, he went and he auditioned and he got his part, Mr. Satan. And uh, sometime later, uh, Chris Sabat, whom you may uh, be familiar with, Vegeta, Piccolo, and uh, about 68 other voices on Dragon Ball Z, I think. Uh, and that's just Dragon Ball Z, uh, right? So, yeah, he came to the show, him and the, uh, some other directors, voice actors uh, had come to the show and they saw me do a character called the Pillsbury Homeboy. It's me. Uh, here's a wrap that you should know made with Pillsbury Crescent Roll. Um, it was the Pillsbury Doughboy uh, as a gangster rapper. <laughs> <laughs> the Doughboy Rap. And uh, yeah, yeah. So I I, uh, I redid Snoop Dogg's "What's My Name." If you're familiar with that rap song, uh, it's a, a Snoop Dogg. It's one of his uh, first hits back in the, the early '90s. And uh, and I redid it to uh, for uh, Pillsbury. What's my name? Pillsbury, homeboy. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank oh, you. All right. So yeah, there it is. Savage saw me do that. And he was like, uh, hey, uh, I think I found the voice of Majin Buu. And I went in and read and, and read for it the next day. And uh, they called me, kept calling me back. And it, Chris Rager likes to tease me that it took me, and it literally took me three sessions for me to be like, well, I think this is my part. I think they're going to keep calling me back and paying me. <laughs> And sure enough, 21 years later, they still are calling me back. 
That is amazing. And it's it's Isn't so it? yeah. great being Thank able you. to do repeat projects, especially with people that you've worked with in the past. <laughs> super fortunate. Yeah, super fortunate, super blessed. Uh, you can't write it. You can't write it like that, you know? So I, I'm just appreciative to be in this position. So what's some of your favorite characters that you've uh, voiced throughout the years? Wow, I mean, you know, obviously, Fat Boo is uh, near and dear to my heart because he was first, uh, the first one I got paid for, you know. But along the way, Pillsbury Doughboy and Scooby Doo and all the old cartoon characters, those are my first like training grounds. And, and some of the Saturday Night Live characters, I was really big into, uh, you know, improv and sketch comedy growing up um, and music. Uh, which, you know, is kind of obvious after you, you see what I've, what I've been doing. Uh, but, you know, I love, I, I tell them as we tell them, whichever one they're paying me for, that's the one I like best. Uh, I love them all. Seriously, though, I'm really fortunate. Like I say, I'm fortunate to be able to be, uh, be in this, this business, you know, because like we were talking earlier, it's a, it's, it's a huge business these days. Uh, one that wasn't even around when I started this. You know what I mean? Like I said, it was acting. It wasn't voice acting. Dub. There was no such thing as I want to be a anime dub voice act. What? What? Yeah, that wasn't even a title. So interesting to see how the industry has changed throughout all of these years. Like even from like, cause I'm like 36 right now. And like from the time I was in high school when I first started wanting to do all this till now, just like, it's so much easier for anyone to really join if they want, if they actually put the time and effort into it. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Even in the last five years, two years, even with this pandemic, we, everyone had to get creative because, you know, because we already are creative in this business, but you know, especially in this business, you don't get a regular paycheck. You know, <laughs> you don't. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, they tell you to stay at the house, and uh, well, wait a second, uh, I, I I need some money, you know, and uh, and people, unfortunately, it didn't. It, people had to to move on to other things and. And, and for other people weren't as fortunate uh, in other areas. And I'm, I'm totally sensitive to that. But, um, you know, as it is, uh, it, it, people, people advance, people found the way and, uh, and, and where there is a will, there's a way. And, and now we do have all these opportunities for people. So um, I think it's important to just uh, uh, accentuate those positives and uh and keep moving forward so uh scenario from uh -huh. the time you started in the industry to now yeah. what do you th do you think it would have been easier or harder and when and why do you think that wow <laughs> wow yeah you know um i i think in the sense of what i was just speaking of i would have found a way you know what I mean? I think I would have done the same kind of things that I did, uh, it, but I would have used the, the tools that were at hand. You know, um, I can tell this story now because the statute of limitations have run out. Uh, but uh, as, a, as a young, uh, poor, uh, hopping couches actor, uh, hungry, both literally and figuratively, uh, and with friends that were in the same boat, um, I got creative and I called uh, pizza places and I acted like an old man and I told them that I had ordered a pizza uh, at lunchtime and it had arrived cold with the wrong ingredients. And, uh, you know, I, I just played that, that old man. Listen, I'm really sorry. And I, I tried to call back, but y'all were busy, you know, and I understand it was lunchtime and, and I got put on hold a couple of times and I got hung up on once, but, but uh, anyway, I just didn't know what I needed to do to get that taken care of. And the next thing you know, this manager's like, well, I'm very, I'm very sorry, sir. Um, I, I'd like to take care of that for you. Um, 
uh, next time you want a pizza, uh, it's on us. Well, well, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it. Actually, I've got grandkids over this evening, and uh, I'd love to get them a pizza. Would that be all right? Well, sure. Yeah. And so I get a couple of large pizzas, and this poor young delivery driver would show up at this apartment and find not a place uh, a, uh, occupied by an old man, but uh, five uh, young, <laughs> rather uh, questionable young men, uh, and took the pizza. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, so, yeah, I did a little bit of Robin Hooding. Uh, I robbed from the rich. I gave to the poor, which was me and my friends. But, uh, you know, that, there it is. It's not something I'm proud of, but in the sense of being creative and doing what you got to do uh, with what you got, I, I would like to think that, uh, uh, you know, I would have I would have taken advantage of those, of those things. When we did Comedy Truth, we were constantly having ideas and saying, oh, if we only had a camera. What? Like, if I say that now, you're like, whatever. Like Vines, when Vines came out, I was like, oh my God, this is what we did. Oh, we need to be a comedy troupe again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as time goes on, here we are. What advice would you give to uh, new people that are coming into the industry? Well, you know what? I To boil it down to one word, hustle. Hustle. Um, I know there's a big hustle culture uh, thing that was never uh, it was never like labeled before, and I get it, right? There is a there. I I see that as an issue. A bit of the hustle hustle culture can be detrimental to your health, just literally, right? But um, uh, to that effect, the hustle part of my advice is that. There are plenty of people that exist in the past, present, and future that will have more talent than I will ever hope to have. And they will never, ever see any success, much less the level of success that I've been blessed with or others have been blessed with, right? There are people that will go on and achieve greatness and People will say, how in the world did they achieve that? Because in my view and in popular view, it's not that talented. However, nonetheless, they are successful. Hustle. They put themselves in position for, uh, to uh, capitalize on opportunity, right? And, and that's what it's about. I did the same thing just by being in place of doing my comedy troupe, right? Um, it's horrible advice to say, hey, go start a comedy troupe, find a Mexican restaurant, perform until you get uh, discovered. That's how I did it, right? Horrible advice. However, what I would hope you'd take from that is that you put yourself into position because that wasn't the only position I was in, right? I was also auditioning. I was also taking workshops. I was also, you know what I mean? I was also uh, doing a little bit of weight tables uh, to put food in my stomach uh, when, when acting wasn't, wasn't so hot, you know? So. Um, and then the pizza people started to get an understanding of what was going on. <laughs> right. Well, uh, to be fair, the, the pizza was when I was super young and, and wasn't quite as mature as I needed to be. And that was the time, uh, that was a time of growth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, I wasn't proud about it, but you know, at the end of the day, it was like, ah. It's Boom. that survival instinct. Like you got to yeah. do sometimes what you got to do. Understandable. <laughs> we, were, we were super into the jerky boys anyway. And I would really have been happy to have just kept the manager on the line for five, 10 minutes and wasted his time or had a fun fun time making my friends crack up on the other end of the uh, uh, on the other end of the room or whatever that would have been just fine but you know as it was uh i was able uh as my friend mark whose apartment we were often at playing video games and uh and wasting time 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> his mother was from Australia, is from Australia. And, uh, and he was very open with his mother, still is. And uh, he t he'd tell her about my escapades on the phone. And, and uh, she'd go, oh, oh, I love it, Josh. Oh, you're entertaining them. You're entertaining them. They're, they're paying you for their entertainment. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll take that. I'll use that excuse. <laughs> so, uh, but at the end, you know, I was, uh, I was uh, practicing. Uh, there was a, there was a, a means to an end. Uh, uh, it was fraud. I do apologize, uh, but the statute of limitations. Anyway, uh, here we are. <laughs> and that's all that matters. Goal right. <laughs> right. Right. The hustle. Hey, listen. Hey, kids. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Learn from our mistakes. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Observe that's and improve. Observe. <laughs> and improve <laughs> do not emulate <laughs> you know what i mean right? I, oh, dear. I keep having to tell that to my kids all the time be like yeah just i tell you these stories so you hopefully don't make the same mistakes i do make your own and preferably they're not oh, as bad <laughs> yeah yeah well we can dream can't we yeah <laughs> so without revealing too much can you tease any upcoming projects you are currently working on? Hmm. Sure. Uh, you know, for the most part right now, what I'm working on is uh, my Beastie Boys tribute band, Ryman and Steelin. Uh, I do MCA's part. We will be uh, going to Cleveland August 5th, Cleveland House of Blues. Uh, we will be in uh Los Angeles, California, Redondo Beach specifically for a, 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 a tribute band festival uh, in October. And also in October, we'll be in Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, I'm also doing a few signings with my man, Chris Rager, uh, the anime's favorite odd couple, Mr. Satan and Majin Buu. Uh, uh, we'll be, let's see, where are we going to be? We're going to be in South Padre. We're going to be in Savannah. We're going to be in Killeen. Uh, 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 we're going to be all over the place. Check me out on all the socials. Yes, uh, and those will be Josh linked Martin. everywhere in the description. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, follow, you know. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Hit that like and subscribe button. And if you haven't already hit that notification bell, hit it, hit it. <laughs> and is there anything you want to uh, say to your audience and your, your fans? Listen, uh, I got to say that I got the best ones. I really do. Um, I wish that I was younger and still ate uh, with a hollow leg because I get all the candy, uh, I get all the Starbursts, I get all the chocolate, all the Skittles, I get all of it. And I'm so appreciative. Uh, on, in addition to the love, everybody's so cool. And um, man, I'm just so, so thankful to be able to go to conventions and actually interact with people. Because that is really the thing after all the times of going in the studio, going in the booth, doing it and then way before the internet wondering hmm does anybody watch this i don't know and then all these years later there's lots of people telling you they did and so that's awesome i really thank thank everyone yes and again thank everyone for watching uh showverse this is our third season uh the link to the previous two seasons are in the description below. Again, follow Josh Martin and all of his amazing adventures to come. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Yeah.